Restricted Answer 4. Okay, 2016, this is Restricted Answer 4. Okay, sickle cell anemia is an inherited blood disorder that reduces the ability of red blood cells to transport oxygen around the body by changing the structure of haemoglobin. In sickle cell anemia, the primary structure of a haemoglobin subunit is altered. The amino acid glutamic acid is substituted by the amino acid valine. Structures of glutamic acid and valine are shown below. Okay. Um, right, so this is this is important as a kind of just basic thing that we're aware that you have a common section, which is this bit here, um, and then your R group is your section down here. And on that R group, you have different groups that act in similar ways. So you have lots of them which are charged and therefore hydrophilic. And you have ring structures and very stable straight chains um, which are hydrophobic. Um, and these, you can also put these as polar um, and non-polar. Okay, not if you've got a charge, then it's charged. But um, state, ask you to state the class of amino acids to which valine belongs. So this one here. Um, and what you have here is basically nothing you can attach to anything else. So this is a non-polar um, amino acid and also accepting hydrophobic in the Mars scheme. Okay. Identify one type of secondary structure shown in the haemoglobin molecule in the figure below. Okay, so in this one, actually, let me just kind of kind of zoom in a wee bit and then move it just so we can see it a little bit better. Hopefully you can see it okay. And then obviously I'm assuming that you're also looking at this in the proper um, paper as well. Okay, so you have three main types of structure inside, um, inside protein for secondary structure. You have alpha helices, which are little spirally things. Um, you have beta pleated sheet, which is where we have the chain goes this way and then it might just turn around and go back that way in a neat one or it could wander off and go this way again. Okay, so we have two types of sheet, parallel and anti-parallel. They are shown on kind of standard diagrams like this as an arrow showing which way the sheet is, is falling. Okay, and then lastly, you have turns, which is where you come out of a helix and then go into another helix or into a beta pleated sheet. So there is no beta pleated sheet in here that I can see. You definitely have plenty of little spirally things. So we have either alpha helix, which is what I expect you to pull out, and you could see turns. I think alpha helix is the one you want to go for. Okay, but both are fine for the Mart scheme. Okay. Sorry for all the scribbling about. Okay, here we go. Explain the term cooperativity in relation to oxygen binding to haemoglobin. Okay, so what you have here is common for lots of things, but it's haemoglobin you need to know it for. Um, so basically, if you bind at one unit, at one subunit, it increases the likelihood or the ability to bind at others. So once you get that first oxygen attached in, the next oxygen is much easier to attach and then easier again and easier again and easier again. Okay. Um, graph below shows the oxygen saturation of haemoglobin at different oxygen pressures for an individual with normal haemoglobin and for another individual with sickle cell. So we've got a kind of standard graph, not a problem, it's nice units. Um, we have normal haemoglobin as a solid line and sickle cell as dotted, okay. Um, use the graph to compare the oxygen saturation of normal and sickle cell as oxygen pr pressure increases. Okay, so you have two kind of things that you need to talk about here. This is your first bit, really, because what you can see is that between zero to 20, there is no difference in how they behave. Okay, but then after that, what you have is that the sickle cell haemoglobin does not take in as much oxygen as, oh, as normal haemoglobin as the oxygen pressure increases. Okay. Um, I, you're not even, in the Mark scheme, they're not even requiring you to put numbers in. Other than that, recognising that 0 to 20 thing, um, which is 
I think, quite nice of them, really, because um, otherwise I would have expected that you had to put in numbers. OK, but your two points are that below 20, and there's an argument for it being 15, OK, exactly where that, that point is. In the mark scheme, they are saying 15 to 20, so they're accepting either. Um, that there is no difference in how they behave at low oxygen units. As the oxygen increases above that, um, it is um, greater binding in normal hemoglobin than sickle cell. And there's your two marks. OK. Molecules of sickle cell hemoglobin clumped together, preventing access to oxygen binding sites. Suggests why this is a result of the substitution of glutamic acid by valine. OK, so if I go back to these, we had a change from something which has a charge, this bit here, OK, which is going to be massively hydrophilic, OK, and valine is hydrophobic. So what you've got is more and more interactions with the valine, if there's more valines there, that are just going to stick more things together because it wants to be inside rather than close to any kind of liquid, basically. Um, so you either have to say valine has lost that charge and is nonpolar, um, so they no longer um, try to be separate, OK? Um, hydrophobic interactions increasing would be one or that charge means that they are going to push um, other negatives away so that means that the subunits will not clump together because there's lots of minuses um, any of those which are reasonable got you the mark uh, that's the question